This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Thursday, October 14. The Caribbean Examination Council today reported that students around the region performed reasonably well despite the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. More than 20,000 students took the exam from June 28 to July 30. The tests were delayed to allow students more time to prepare given the disruptions caused by the virus. At today's official release of the results, CXC Director of Operations Dr. Nicole Manning disclosed that fewer students took the Caribbean Secondary School Entrance Certificate, the Caribbean Vocational Training, the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, and the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination. We did see a reduction both in candidate entries as well as subject entries. And this would have been our lowest cohort for the last four years. Um, we saw where we had a reduction of, uh, for candidate entries, as much as 27,750. That was, would have been the number of candidate entries we would have had, and for subject entries, 110,020. Now, another significant note is our absentees. The highest we have had in four years, 8.83%. And I want us to remember that this group would have registered, not necessarily deferred, but would have decided not to attend the examination. Dr. Manning maintained that CXC had risen to the challenge facing the students during the year, but she acknowledged that the COVID-19 pandemic, the eruption of the last Soufrey volcano in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the passing of Hurricane Elsa had also impacted students. The volcanic eruption in St. Vincent and the Grenadines as well as Tropical Storm Elsa. So for the second time, last year we had a visit from a storm and we had it again this year, but we were again able to rise to that challenge. So regarding the Tropical Storm impact, as I would have already discussed and mentioned what we would have done for the St. Vincent and Grenadines cohort, um, we had cancellation of, I shouldn't know, postponement really of the examinations for St. Lucia, Dominica, and Barbados. Now, the cancellation would have been at the local level, where the decision would have been made just to make sure we protect life, and otherwise the government would have made that decision to cancel the exams. But um, CXC was able to facilitate these candidates, and the exams were, examinations were rescheduled and administered in the second city for St. St. Vincent and the Grenadines Forum. The Barbados Association of Event Professionals is anxious for a return to business and is urging government to create a framework to allow its members to resume operations. President of the association, Dwayne Bass, told Barbados Today the sector is hanging on by a thread after grounding to a halt due to the restrictions imposed as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Once our country returns to providing medium and large scale cultural experiences, in its bid to replenish critical foreign exchange levels, we are concerned about the depletion of technical skill sets and capacities, which have been integrated within the Barbados brand as a first class festival and event destination. It is from this perspective, we look forward to our inclusion in the discussions and crafting of the protocols that will govern the event sector going forward. The event industry is not in a position to survive any further inactivity. We are therefore hopeful that a level of urgency be placed on updating the existing protocols to provide a level playing field for business owners across sectors, allowing business in, businesses in the event sector the opportunity to resume commercial activity. A similar call is also coming from President of the Entertainment Association of Barbados, Rudy Maloney, pointing to the recently concluded Miami Carnival, where patrons had to be fully vaccinated and tested beforehand. Maloney says government must find a way to allow for events to be hosted as part of the rollout of safe zones. Association, we had discussions uh, about reopening the industry and some some similar, it wasn't called a safe zone, but some similar protocols were put in place for the industry. Um, people fully vaccinated, people getting um, PCR tests 24 to 48 hours before going to events, etc. Nothing never materialized, right? Um, so now we have to wait and see you know, what are the conditions uh, coming with the safe zone? I think it made sense 
for the industry if it's going to make sense for the, uh, for business. Um, so people, 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 people that see the party inside of, of entertainment, they don't see the business side. So it has to make sense um, for an event producer to put on an event. So there are things that we have to wait and see before we start to jump up back up. To the latest COVID-19 numbers, a total of 320 people tested positive for the viral illness on Wednesday by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory. 69 persons under the age of 18 and 251 are 18 years and older. There are 578 people in isolation facilities and 2,519 in home isolation. Five people died from the virus yesterday. Three men aged 49, 56, and 92, and two women aged 50 and 73. Two of the deceased were fully vaccinated and three unvaccinated. The death toll from COVID-19 is now 108. Confirmed cases of COVID-19 recorded since March last year now stand at 12,105. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi. I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental, so at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic, and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. happenings, the United States Embassy in Jamaica has issued a security warning alert for U.S. government personnel to refrain from traveling in crime hotspots throughout the island, including Augustown and Cassava Peace in St. Andrew. More on this report from TVJ News. U.S. Embassy says due to the sharp increase in shootings and gun-related violence over the past two weeks in August Town, U.S. government personnel are prohibited from traveling to August Town with immediate effect and until further notice. It says U.S. government personnel are also prohibited from traveling to other communities in Kingston and St. Andrew, such as Cassava Peace between Mountain View Avenue and Hagley Park Road, south of Halfway Tree and Old Hope Roads, Trenchtown, Tivoli Gardens and Arnett Gardens. The list continues with Grand Spen, Standpipe, Duhaney Park, Mountain View Avenue between Deanery Road and Windward Road, Olympic Gardens, Coburn Gardens, Seaview Gardens and Denham Town. The embassy says the approved primary route to the Norman Manley International Airport is South Camp Road to Norman Manley Boulevard. The approved secondary route is Mountain View to Deanery Road to South Camp Road and then Norman Manley Boulevard. Traveling by public buses and driving outside the prescribed areas of Kingston at night are also forbidden. On the international front, gunfire in Beirut killed several Lebanese Shiites in what authorities said was an attack on protesters who were planning to take part in a demonstration called by Hezbollah to demand the removal of the judge investigating last year's port explosion. More in the support from Reuters TV. Authorities say the attack was aimed at protesters planning to participate in a demonstration called by Hezbollah to demand the removal of the judge investigating last August port explosion, whom they accuse of bias. The catastrophe killed more than 200 people and devastated swathes of Beirut. Local television footage showed bullets bouncing off buildings and people running for cover. Scenes reminiscent of the 1975 to 1990 civil war. Civilians were evacuated from buildings close to the gunfire, and a Reuters witness said that at a nearby school, teachers were telling children to lie face down on the ground with their hands on their heads. An army statement reported that the gunfire had targeted protesters as they passed through the Tayuna traffic circle, an area that divides Christian and Shiite Muslim neighborhoods. 
That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.